So love your neighbor as yourself is an impossible thing because if you're, here's an example, and it's kind of a, a jarring one. If your neighbor has bed bugs, which, which we have had happen, and if you get bed bugs, which isn't a fun experience, and I'll tell you, I've had them. And living in these kinds of neighborhoods, you will get these kinds of things happening. How do you love your neighbor as yourself when that happens? You know, the only answer is, if you want to get rid of your bed bugs, you have to help your neighbor get rid of theirs as well. And it just doesn't end. If you want your kids to be educated, shouldn't you help your neighbor with their kids? If, you're, if your neighborhood needs a life-saving surgery that, that isn't covered by OHIP, shouldn't you find a way to, to help them in the same way you would help your own family members? And so it actually is an impossible task, but we serve the God of impossibilities. And with God, all things are possible. And so I think it's an unending pursuit, and yet there's so much joy in seeking to love our neighbor as ourselves. And then you just start, start to see the beauty of commandments, even about suffering and sacrifice coming out of that. You know, one of the quotes I read this weekend in the Red Sea Rules uh, says something to the effect, I think it's Hudson Taylor, who said, you know, you go as far as you can mm -hmm. and God will go the rest of the way. You know, you do the possible, yeah. he'll do the impossible. You had some barriers in yeah. this wedding plan of yours. Just, just tell us a couple of them and, and how God dealt with it. That's, it, it was interesting, the barriers that were there. And one thing I've learned is if you're going to do something hard, there will be a barrier. And that's why it's hard. That's why maybe no one's done it yet. In our case, there was a little barrier there that almost was the deal breaker for the whole thing. And that was the fact that the subway train goes by uh, our neighborhood every two and a half minutes. It's a loud train, you know, rolling by. And when I first suggested to Jesse, my wife, that we get married right in our neighborhood, um, she was excited about it. But there was one thing that she wasn't excited about, and it was the train going by every two and a half minutes, roaring by, drowning out whatever was happening. And she said, what if we were saying our vows as the train was going by? And it was a good point. But the Lord reminded me that there always will be one thing. And so we gave it to him and we said, God, if you want us to get married in our neighborhood, you need to solve this problem. And there were other problems as well. But just the property you run, that piece of green. Yeah, we, we live in a very small neighborhood, four uh, high rises with a thousand person people in each of them. It's only 300 by 300 meters, the entire area. And there's only one little patch of grass where we could fit enough people. Not, not quite enough, which is why we had to do it twice. But about 600 people could fit in this small patch of grass right next to the subway car. And in order to have our wedding there, we also needed permission from the building uh, uh, management. And that was a challenge. And we prayed a lot. And it was a miracle. It's a long story, but at the end of the day, they gave their permission and their blessing. And it was amazing how God took away each barrier um, as we did what we could do and as we mobilized people to pray for these things to be overcome. The quick answer to the, the subway problem was this. You're going to be pretty amazed by this. The day of our wedding, there was construction on the subway tracks. So they stopped the trains? And so they had to slow down oh. just before they reached your stop. Our neighborhood. Oh, come on. And the, the train slowed down 100 meters away from where our wedding was and slowed right down to a crawl and crawled past uh, quietly every two and a half minutes. And it even added to the atmosphere. It added to the excitement of our wedding. And we also had amazing production. Somebody donated a stage and sound and lighting, very high quality to our wedding and we had great uh, microphones and so on so everyone could hear everything and it was it was just an incredible day attempt great things for god expect great things from god that's right what a portrait and you know that dining together is mm. is such an intimate thing and in yeah. many cultures perhaps more than ours we kind of right. like got too busy and distracted that's but right. it's just a lovely way to connect and i know this has changed how you relate in your neighborhood. 
Right. You're a special person to all those people now. Well, it's, it's quite something to get in the elevator and to have the person smile at you yeah. and to not know them and not know their name, but to say, did you by any chance come to my wedding? And usually they did. <laughs> and there are little girls and little boys who beam when we enter the, into the elevator and they say, I have your picture on my fridge. See, our wedding favor was a picture of us that oh. says, pray for Nigel and Jesse. Oh. And so we have, we have photographs of ourselves all across <laughs> our neighborhood in all the fridges. You're everywhere. Saying, pray for Nigel and Jesse. And we, we ask people to pray for us because we need, we need that prayer. And they know you are people of prayer. That's right. They have a time of need. Yeah. This article in Faith Today was really talking about intercultural churches mm -hmm. and the need for our churches to be more embracing mm -hmm. of not other religions, right. other cultures. And you also have pioneered a church. What did you tell me? You're, you met in a multi-living room service yeah. yesterday, Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. that's right. You know, what's a church? I think um, a church is a group of believers who are committed to the Lord, committed to each other, have leadership, enjoy fellowship, worship, mission. And we began as a group of people who moved into this neighborhood, committed to pray together for a, a, a night a week for the neighborhood. And out of that has grown a group of people um, who've, who already, some of us already knew Jesus and some of us have come to know Jesus in the last couple of years. And together we are we are seeking after God um, through His Son, Jesus. You know, we have less than a minute, but that amazing book, which I've featured here on the program, mm. Operation World, uh, is something you're passionate about. And I wonder if this isn't a good place for people to start to really get a heart for a world that needs Christ. In the less than a minute that we have left, I would say this is probably one of the the most amazing books in the world, aside, of course, from the Bible. It was written by a Canadian, a guy named Jason Mandrick, and it's uh, described by world leaders like Ravi Zacharias and K.P. Yohanan and Johnny Erickson Tata as the best prayer guide for the world. It's a country a day, isn't it's, it? It's pretty much a country a day, that's right. And it helps us to learn what breaks God's heart and what brings Him joy around the world. It helps us to, to stop praying prayers of God bless Africa and instead God bring people to the slums of Somalia. Mm -hmm. Things like that to and help us to know what's going on. And the details about each country are in there. Yeah. This is, is that what printing? I forget. What printing. This one just came out in 010. Yeah. It's a pretty new edition. It's the latest edition. Correct. And at operationworld.ca we've built a website for this book as move in, you know, we're a third party saying, this is a good book. We didn't have anything to do with the production of this book, but we think it's so awesome that we're trying to get 10,000 Canadians to get a copy of this book and to pray through it. And you can do that at operationworld.ca. Wow. Well, I hope you've been inspired. Uh, you may not be planning to adjust those wedding plans, but we have a global picture of uh, one way that we absolutely can love our neighbor as mm. ourself by praying intelligently for the needs that they have in all these countries and who knows i mean you just think of the brits in special occasions like the the jubilee they love to do street absolutely. parties they love to come out and everyone do loves things parties together and yeah yeah i think we could get more parties happening we need Nigel. To, we need to start partying more <laughs> Thank you so much. Great. Thanks a lot, Moira. It was great to be Stay here. Stay connected to us. We need to keep an eye on you. Absolutely. Add me on Facebook. Nigel Paul. You stay there. We'll be back.